Hi, this is Rick, Vintage Oddball Cards. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Well, first off, uh, Jake, about your misfit application, why it was denied. Um, um, let me get back to that. But today I'd like to show you, I got this idea. My wife is a elementary school teacher and, uh, you know, she does these things, show and tell on Fridays. Uh, I remember show and tell as a kid. Um, I thought it was actually a really cool uh, thing as a little uh, boy to bring in something to school to show off. It was usually a sports item. Uh, but today, why don't I do a little show and tell? So I picked some cards just uh, randomly out of my collection, something that just struck a chord, and uh, let me show you some cards. Uh, some I've shown before, some I haven't. Uh, and this one, first thing right off the bat, is not a card. And what it is, it's a, uh, it's a tag. And I'll, why don't I just show you? Here it is right here. It's Christy Mathewson. And uh, these were given away. Um, the, after he passed away, he passed away in 1925. Well, in October of 1925. Uh, in July of 26, they had a benefit memorial game. And they gave out these tags. There was a string attached to them right here. And I guess you would put it on your wrist. It was a white string or on a button. Uh, on the back here, you're going to see uh, what it says. Uh, benefit Memorial Game. Uh, put a ball over the plate for Maddie. Big six, gallant sportsman, courageous soldier, kindly gentleman. And uh, I believe this to be legit. Um, not a copy uh, from a good source, but <laughs> to me, it could be very easily, uh, you know, duplicated, but kind of a cool item you don't see every day. So this would be the 1926 of July, Senators versus the New York Giants. Why don't we stay on the Maddie theme here? Um, this is a 1939-43 Hall of Fame postcard a bust of, uh, of Maddie here. Actually, the person, the sculptor, um, passed away before the, uh, they, the, the, the sculptor passed away in 1937. The Hall of Fame opened up in 1939, so she did not get to see um, the bust in the Hall of Fame. Um, the sculptor's name um, was uh, Kuna, I believe, how you pronounce her name. Uh, I do have the photo somewhere, darn it, and it's the type of thing where it's kind of kind of pissing me off that I can't find a photo of her standing next to the bust. Uh, this would have been a Type 2, meaning post-opening uh, of the Hall of Fame. Type 1s would be prior. Uh, you can tell on the back here by, uh, it's hard to read here, but by what it says here, whether it's a type one or type two, but kind of a cool uh, first. That's when they first started producing these postcards in 1939 to 43. Yep. Uh, why don't we stick with the larger cards here? How about a, a Yogi Berra, it's 54 New York American um, newspaper. Uh, these were put in to the newspaper and apparently I was reading that uh, kids and people, you know, you buy these the newspaper at the newsstand, they're looking through the newspaper, this falls out, so they're all over the New York <laughs> streets in 1954. Uh, just the three different New York teams are included, you know, the Dodgers, Yankees, and the Giants. So Yogi Berra. That's, what's cool, too, is the schedule on the back here, which I always think is cool. Uh, how about we... No, let's go back to Maddie here. This is my very first Mathewson card. Uh, 
Uh, it's been probably 20 plus years. I picked this up. Beautiful color on this card. The issue with it, obviously, it's trimmed here. Um, maybe a kid or whatever didn't mean to trim it. But uh, back here you can see. But uh, this is kind of a really cool for me just because it was my very first Maddie card. Uh, my guess in the early, uh, t uh, I don't know, 2000, two th between 2000, 2005, I don't know, years ago. But uh, it's when I couldn't afford um, these cards and uh, I had to get one and this is the only one I could afford. How about a little Babe Ruth action here? This is 2002. So... The Maddie's probably around that 2002 mark when I, you know, I was in and out of collecting and I started to collect these game used items, cards, and this is the uh, Ruth 2002 Upper Deck Bat Card. And, uh, at the time, I, these things were just hot. Uh, anything uh, when it came to. Uh, you know, game use, especially a Ruth. So I thought this was really cool. Uh, like the buttercream, uh, 1933 buttercream, uh, Chuck Klein. Uh, you don't see these every day. Um, looks like a bookmark. Uh, I don't know if kids have bookmarks nowadays. I don't even know if they have textbooks nowadays everything seems to be on the computer but this looks like a bookmark to me um, let's see what I have here I just threw, put this out uh, Aaron Rodgers rookie Bowman you know tore up his uh, ankle and, uh, so we got to have an Aaron Rodgers just show an Aaron Rodgers card uh, how about a Fleer Elgin Baylor Rookie card. Um, Oscar Robinson. Rookie. Now Al Adels here. This is the first card in the set. And obviously this is a tough piece just because of kids putting rubber bands around it. It's the first card. Um, Al Adels is a big fan of Al Adels. He's been with the Warriors for 60 years. Uh, his nickname was the Destroyer when he played. He coached uh, the first uh, uh, championship team in uh, the Bay Area, the Warriors, 74-75 team. Um, just a, just a well-respected person in the community. He, uh, the funny thing is he always says that him and Wilt Chamberlain once scored 117 points in one game. He was the guard. He was the second leading scorer next to Wilt scoring 100. I think I believe it was 17, 17 or 27. I believe it was 17 he scored, but uh, kind of really cool. 117 points between the two players. Uh, how about uh, Helmar Stamp uh, home run Baker? These were put into tobacco packs. American Tobacco Company. Again, probably one you don't see every day. Little Willie Mays action here. Not sure why I picked this one up. I just uh, 1955 uh, miscut Mays. I don't mind the miscuts when it comes to horizontal as much as the vertical cards uh, in a seven. Beautiful card. Uh, John Brody, my favorite. When I was a 10, 12-year-old, he was basically God to me. Fantastic car quarterback. Hall of very good. Lost to the three straight years. Lost to the uh, the Cowboys early 70s. Uh, I think he was the val most valuable player one year. I mean, fantastic quarterback. Uh, if he won a championship, probably would be in the Hall of Fame. One of my favorite cards of all time, football cards especially, is the John Henry Johnson. I mean, just 
I love this image of him in an eight. Uh, it has him as a halfback, I think. Halfback, fullback, uh, part of the million dollar backfield. How about a Thorpe uh, Grover Alexander and the old SGC slab here? These are tough. The Thorpes are tough. Uh, one of my favorite player, basketball players of all time, just kind of going back to my past when I was a kid. Another god to me was uh, the 71 tops here of Rick Barry, a scoring machine. Scoring machine. I think his second year scored the first year with the Warriors, like 24 games. Second year, 36 points a game. Uh, had a little contract dispute with the owner. Went to the ABA, came back. Just, just an unbelievable player. Many of most of his career, he averaged like six assists a game. Six uh, assists a game. A fantastic passer. Uh, great hands. Just an unbelievable score. So Rick Barry, kind of underrated um, uh, for people that uh, you know are not my age that realize how good this guy was. Uh, how about the Ripken? <laughs> FU card. Always get a kick out of this one. Uh, now, but another bookmarker, Eddie Collins, Willard's Chocolate, Canadian issue. Little Joe, uh, Patrick Marlowe. I'm a big Sharks fan. Man, fantastic skater. Unbelievable talent as a skater. Um, just couldn't get over the top and get a, you know, a Stanley Cup. Same with uh, Jumbo Joe Thornton here, his rookie card. Again, unbelievable assist. This guy's a one of the great passers of all time. Just man, I'm still upset. The Sharks, you know, they had their 10-year run. Team was fantastic. Now they're kind of in the dumps, rebuilding. Um. What can I say about this one? The Jerry Sloan uh, rookie card. I mean, <laughs> it's just unbelievable, the, uh, the photo of this. Um, a little uh, Mother's Cookies. I went to the game in 97. They gave these away. Uh, let's see what we have here. Got the checklist. Somewhere along the way here, there's in this pack, there's a Bonds. Let's see here. JT Snow, fantastic first baseman. There he is. Bonds, back what it looks like. Uh, I'd like to show you one more here if I can find it. Oh, a couple more actually. Here's a Wally Post home run derby card. Uh, I have the maze, but uh, not sure. I always wondered why Wally Post was in the home run derby. He, I think he has the, he had like almost a 600 foot home run in the old Bush Stadium. The year before this came out, I think he had like 12 home runs. He had fantastic power, but just the, uh, you know, star power, you know, Wally Post. Not sure why. Actually, I was reading that he actually, I guess Aaron had a streak going in the Home Run Derby TV show, and he beat, he was the first one to beat Hank Aaron. Uh, let's see, I got one more card. To show. Oh, here it is right here. I just thought I'd show you this. Uh, this one here, I actually cut off a box. And of. Uh, the post cereal box, Jim Davenport, third baseman for the Giants, uh, hard nosed player, but uh, I don't know, how did I do as a kid cutting it off the box? Not too bad. I think I told you one, my wife, my wife, my mom would do most of the cutting when I was a kid because I was so young. Scissors, these were tough as a kid to cut out. And of course, as a kid, what do I do? 
I put the stamp on the back here of Jim Davenport. And hey, thanks for watching. This is Rick, and uh, this was kind of fun. I'm going to have to do some more of these. Uh, and Jake, the reason you didn't, your application was denied was, 